of the impact of COVID-19 um, presented by Mr. Endy, who is the corporate chief engineer at Goldwind. Um, and then we'll have the offshore perspective um, with, for Mr. Z, who is the offshore project line director at Envision. And then we'll wrap up with the interactive Q&A. Um, and we'll also have GWEC experts on China, Fang Zhao and Wang Yang Nong, who will be joining the Q&A as well. All right, so with that being said, I'll now hand it off to our CEO, Ben Backwell, who will introduce the response hub. Over to you, Ben. Great, thank you, Elisa. Um, and good morning to everyone. And uh, thank you to our colleagues in China for taking part in this uh, webinar. It's great to see you all uh, well and working. And um, you know, it's really important you know, for all of us to be working you know, closely together as colleagues and, and and friends in this uh, very difficult time for all of us. So thank you for um, attending. Um, so uh, just a couple of minutes to talk about what GWEC's doing. Um, so <clears throat> the wind industry obviously is facing um, many, many challenges um, right now because of the virus. Some of these are very short-term challenges around things like operating uh, guidelines. Um, and some of them are around things like um, regulation in order to extend uh, commissioning uh, deadlines. Uh, this has been done in um, quite a few countries already and others are still negotiating uh, these uh, changes. Um, and then there's also issues, um, wider issues such as um, extending uh, feed-in tariff um, deadlines or safe harbor deadlines in some countries uh, like the US um, also to take the, the virus into account. And then there's also kind of slightly longer term issues around how wind power is um, included within stimulus uh, plans and how wind power can help uh, economies uh, really to go into recovery and, and make their uh, make its contribution to economic uh, growth. So um, GWEC has established the COVID uh, response hub along with our friends and partners um, from uh, Europe, uh, Wind Europe in China, um, in India and in many, many associations around the world, and also with input from our um, members, companies, um, so that we can very accurately measure the impact of the virus on the wind industry. And also we can identify which areas we need to intervene uh, in, in terms of lobbying um, as quickly as possible. So the idea is that we can pass information quickly to where it's needed um, to associations, uh, so that they can use this information in their talks and negotiations with governments um, in order to be able to show where things are working successfully, where regulation is helpful. Um, and we're already seeing uh, this uh, as being something very useful for a lot of uh, countries. Um, we're also responding directly to requests for information um, from governments um, and making submissions around the expected impact, what kind of regulation we would like to see uh, that we think would be helpful to keep operations uh, going and to keep the industry going. So um, it's uh, great to have so many people around the world contributing to this and we're working closely with people. And if you have information or areas or points of emphasis that you would like us to uh, feature more prominently or you think we are missing, please uh, uh, let us know. Um, we're updating this uh, every day in real time. We also have a weekly bulletin um, that you can uh, register for on the website and then you'll receive the latest uh, updates also as a newsletter. And then we are also doing these weekly uh, webcasts uh, with different experts from around the world to talk about the uh, impact. So thank you again, everyone. And I, I, this is a great uh, um, selection of, uh, of panelists and experts um, and looking forward to what you have to say about um, how the impact is in China. So thanks again. Thanks a lot, Ben. Um, as you mentioned, this is the first webcast in a, in a series of webcasts that we'll do on the impact of COVID. Um, so on today's webcast, we're focusing in on China. So I'll pass it off to Mr. Quinn, who's the Secretary General of the Chinese Wind Energy Association, who will be giving us an overview on COVID-19's impact on China and uh, look a bit forward into um, how China is recovering and market outlook. Over to you, Mr. Quinn. Hey, thanks, uh, Alisa, and uh, hello, 
Hello everyone, I'm from Beijing. Nice to meet all of you by internet. Uh, at first, uh, thanks uh, Divide for organizing this event. And it's uh, important and very useful at this difficult time. I hope uh, everyone is doing well. And uh, please safeguard uh, yourself well. Uh, I think uh, today I will give, give a brief uh, introduction about uh, the situation in China and what's going on and what we are doing for Chinese wind energy industry under the influence of the pandemic. Uh, the coronavirus outbreak at the beginning of this year has a strong impact on China's wind industry. Most enterprises shut down in January and February and did not resume production until later February. Uh, as traffic uh, Restriction, uh, restrictions and quarantine measures become barriers to the reception of production and the logistics of components. Enterprises are operating far from full capacity. The control of the outbreak in China is very effective, as everyone has seen that. But uh, the impact on wind industry is far from eliminated. Production capacity in respect of components and turbines has dropped drastically, and the shipment of wind turbines will decline by roughly 30% throughout the year. Uh, and with a six months or longer delay in equipment supply, affected by upstream equipment under supply, transportation restrictions and the delay construction of a power transmission project. Wind farm construction is much slower, slower than scheduled. Onshore wind construction will be delayed at least uh, six months. Offshore construction is more seriously restricted by, wind, by windows period. And the international supply chain and will be postponed uh, even longer. Now the global outbreak is getting server and server. Uh, it is updating uh, the shortage of some components and uh, adding stress on wind power development in China. Because all kinds of man-return materials and the components, such as Italy, German, and uh, Ecuador, uh, have gone into lockdown and the important export of raw materials, such as uh, basha wood from uh, Ecuador, and uh, some bearings for gearbox for man, uh, and man bearings. And uh, IDBT began to be restricted. Such impact is uh, expected to last till the second quarter of this year, maybe third quarter, I don't know. When the international can control the epidemic. And China's wind subsidy reduction policy uh, on onshore wind project proved prior, prior to the end of 2018, but not connected to grid by the end of this year, 2020, or approved from January 1st, 2019 to the end of 2020 but not connected to grid by the end of 2024. And the offshore wind project approved are required, but not connected to the grid with full capacity by the end of 2024. Will not be. Let's continue this conversation based on the, pre uh, the information present on the slide. We can see uh, the industry is asking for uh, the support from the government in terms of the deadline extension and also the, from the policy side where we can see on this slide, uh, it's obviously uh, China is in the rush to get a project built by the end of uh, 2020 uh, due to the uh, expire of the fitting tariff. So this uh, uh, coronavirus pandemic absolutely bring extra pressures uh, onto the Chinese supply chain, even before the crisis, uh, we, we, we all understood due to the installation 
uh, the local supply chain is under the pressure to deliver. Um, so as Chen already mentioned that uh, for the Chinese local industry, we do rely on some component uh, imported from Europe, uh, Latin America for program production uh, in China. So therefore, uh, it's, it makes sense um, for the national NEA or NDRC to considering to postpone uh, the deadline in order to uh, easy the channel for local supply chain, especially financially for a project developer. All right, I think that's a, a pretty much the summary from this slide, Alicia. Well, we'll move on to Mr. Endy, who is Corporate Chief Engineer um, at Goldwind, um, who will give us um, his insights on the uh, impact of COVID-19 on the onshore industry. So over to you, Mr. Endy. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Andy Zai, uh, the Chief Engineer of Goldwind. Uh, I'm very glad to uh, speak on driving the wind industry on the challenge of COVID-19. Um, move on to the next slide, please. Next slide. So this is a brief view about Godwind. And, uh, you know, somebody may not know uh, Godwind. Uh, we have installed more than 60 uh, gigawatts. And then the units is 35,000 uh, installed. And also uh, the company asset is more than 100 billion uh, RMB. Next slide, please. So this one shows uh, Godwin global installed capacity of wind turbines <clears throat> uh, in different areas of uh, the world, uh, just for information purpose. So next slide, please. Okay, now we are moving on uh, Godwin supply chain and the logistic situation, particularly uh, on this uh, current pandemic uh, situation. Uh, for those that uh, we work with our supply chains, you know, Godwin donates uh, 415,000 masks and also shares anti-epidemic uh, experience and the handbook. Also Godwin supply chain uh, finance. So we know uh, to our supply chain. Uh, all uh, Chinese uh, suppliers have been back to normal work and production with 98% uh, rate at the current time. Uh, 90 overseas suppliers uh, in around 20 countries distributed in Europe, uh, North America, Southern America, and Asia uh, have been influenced uh, in different levels. Godwin Danny tracks the supplier's status and also assists them with the preparation of anti-epidemic information and current life pandemic and the protection uh, materials. Uh, supporting their cooperation and production. Uh, now, Godwin keeps normal production and delivery uh, with sufficient materials inventory at current day. Next slide, please. So, Godwin China and the overseas offices and the project situation. Uh, within China, uh, we have 100% return to normal work. Uh, Godwin maintains uh, normal operations of 882 wind farms nationwide during the pandemic, including in Wuhan, uh, the Hubei province, where the capital city is Wuhan. All 25 owned and cooperative plants uh, have resumed production. Around 8,000 employees in China have been back to normal work with full protection. Uh, overseas situation. Uh, all Godwin employees overseas uh, work from home. Uh, Godwin maintains uh, normal operations and the constructions of projects <clears throat> in more than 20 countries, uh, except in Argentina and South Africa, with following uh, instructions of local uh, government policies. So all Godwin overseas offices are closed and employees are working from home. Next slide, please. Yeah, this slide shows the Godwin uh, anti-epidemic uh, uh, actions. Uh, that's just before the pandemic in the world. Uh, from January 20, uh, we started uh, this uh, emergency preparation 
for uh, academic actions. So this is a timeline, shows you how Godwin uh, leadership uh, prepare for this situation from January 20, and then we give the notice on prevention and the control of influential diseases <clears throat> during the spring festival holidays. You know, the spring festival is on January 24. And then we back to work uh, on uh, February uh, 28, uh, employees all return to work on February 28. And in between, uh, there are a bunch of preparation uh, procedures. And then we show this on this slide is for references for those who are in the same situation or similar uh, to help uh, <clears throat> the industry to get out uh, from this uh, epidemic, uh, pandemic and also pandemic situation. Next slide, please. So this one is to show uh, <clears throat> our 2020 forecast uh, within uh, this pandemic situation in the world for uh, COVID-19. So Godwin uh, annual total estimated delivery capacity will be among 12 uh, to 14 gigawatts. Uh, this depending on the different levels of uh, optimism uh, of the COVID-19 influence. Uh, the first quarter uh, of 2020 uh, has been significantly uh, affected under the situation of COVID-19 <clears throat> outbreak in China and right now globally. While the resumption uh, and the positive trend uh, in China, in the next three quarters, uh, there will be full capacity uh, production and the supply from Godwin view. Also, uh, Godwin is All right, looks like we're having a connection issue for Mr. Endy as well. Um, so let's move on to, I think there was the last slide in his presentation. Well, perhaps, I don't know, perhaps Lynn, Lynn could finish that slide if she can still hear us. Yeah, Lynn, are you on the line still? Well, I think no, maybe Mr. Endy is sharing her telephone. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Um, so let's move on and we can, we can readdress this. Oh, no, he's back. Okay. Can you hear me? <laughs> Yes, yes. So we can hear you. Sorry for the technical issues uh, on this uh, online uh, conference. So, Alicia, I don't know uh, where you are hearing right now. Maybe let, let me repeat for the next slide. So this is the 2020 forecast uh, from a Godwin perspective. Uh, Godwin's uh, annual total estimated delivery capacity will be among 12 to 14 gigawatts. Uh, depending on the different levels of optimism of the COVID-19 influence. Uh, of course, our first quarter got uh, much influence uh, by this uh, uh, virus. Uh, and and uh, with the resumption and the positive trend in China, you know, we are back to uh, work 100% in China. So in the next three quarters, uh, there will be uh, full capacity production and supply uh, from Godwin perspective. Uh, Godwin is ready to welcome uh, the coming of wind power uh, parity uh, price time uh, with the onshore uh, lower wind speed and parity uh, price turbine product. Uh, our product GW150 slash 2.8 dash 3.0 megawatts, uh, which has won a uh, wind power monthly uh, gold model, uh, a medal uh, of global wind turbines uh, in uh, 19, uh, 2019. So for uh, onshore uh, middle to higher wind speed and offshore, uh, Godwin has uh, respective uh, flagship products uh, based on GW4S uh, platform, uh, 6S platform, and also our 8S platforms. So in 2020 and the future, uh, Godwin uh, will increase uh, the service business and expand the service markets uh, domestically and also globally. So that's my presentation. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, you. Mr. Endy, for that, that presentation. Um, we'll now shift to the offshore perspective with Mr. Z um, from Envision Energy. Uh, so over to you, Mr. Z. Mm -hmm. 
just need to unmute you. There we go. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm Dick Xie. I'm from Envision uh, China. I'm in charge of uh, Envision offshore product line now. Uh, next, next page, please. Okay, can you hear me? Next page. Yep. Okay, I'm sorry that uh, we just received this request uh, two, three days ago so that we don't have time to have an in, uh, English presentation. Uh, sorry for that. Um, uh, first of all, uh, a, a last year, the global offshore installation has reached to 6.1 gigawatts uh, and China uh, reached uh, two gigawatts uh, last year. So China is, uh, was number one last year. And the second is, uh, everyone knows that at the end of next year, the offshore will be, uh, the fitting tariff price will be expired by end of next year. And the, the third message is uh, Envision right now, uh, totally we already installed 1.4 gigawatts offshore. Uh, Envision has, has been this uh, leading offshore player in, in, in China offshore uh, sector. And uh, next page, please. Hello, next page, please. Hello. Hi, I think there might be just a bit of a lag, but it is on the next slide. You are okay. on the next slide, don't Okay. Okay. Um, uh, after Chinese uh, Spring Festival, uh, uh, also facing the pandemic of uh, COVID-19. Um, but we have our advantage from supply chain point of view. Uh, first of all, we 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 using our proven uh, supply chain to offshore up, uh, offshore platform, uh, which is four to five megawatt level. Uh, so based on this platform, uh, all components of supply chain are, are mature. Um, and uh, also things uh, in order to we we got we just got this message of. Uh, Expiration by end of next year, offshore, uh, offshore area. So we already start to stock some uh, strategic components uh, 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 since uh, last year to make sure we can deliver this uh, turbine uh, by end of next year. So uh, even we're facing a very challenging situation, but from supply chain point of view, we are still uh, control our pace. Uh, for example, uh, uh, on February 17, uh, op Envision Offshore uh, Factory in Jiang China Jiangsu Province, Sheyang City, uh, we uh, recovered the production line uh, by uh, February 17. Uh, this is uh, also among the most early uh, recovered uh, offshore <laughs> manufacturing in China. So next page, please. Um, so, sorry, uh, yes. Uh, we, we have been con uh, closely contact with uh, our supplier uh, since uh, this pandemic situation, uh, dynamically ch exchange information. Before this pand pandemic, we normally have uh, one or two weeks uh, cycle to dialogue with our strategic partner. Uh, uh, since uh, pandem pandemic simulation, we switch over to two, three days uh, uh, cycle to talk to our uh, strategic partner to make sure we have a time delivery. And uh, not only wind turbine uh, recovered from uh, manufacturing, but also Envision also uh, set up another uh, supply chain of uh, Envision, Envision made mask. Uh, you can see that, uh, okay, maybe we'll talk about this in the next page. Um, we also loan the, loan the money to our supply, make sure they can recover from this pandemic. And also we donate uh, Envision made uh, mask, uh, 300,000 piece of uh, mask to our supplier, make sure they, they can recover. So by far, uh, the, the, the supply already reached to 99 percentage. Uh, they recovered, already recovered. Um, even we are 
control our pace to make sure we can deliver offshore product. But the situation is still quite challenging, uh, especially the supply chain components from uh, overseas. So uh, uh, at the time of talking to our strategic partner in Europe, especially, Envision also is looking for some uh, backup solution uh, from supply chain point of view. Uh, next page, please. Okay, this is uh, the last page. And uh, you can see that uh, uh, on February uh, 19, uh, this is Envision 4.5 megawatt offshore turbine. Uh, this is uh, China general uh, nuclear uh, project in Zhejiang province. Uh, this turbine was uh, erected uh, on February 19. So you can see that uh, even we have, we, Envision is facing this pandem pandemic situation but uh, we still very uh, actively uh, deliver our product to make sure we can deliver our uh, commitment by end of next year. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Z. Um, before we move on to the Q and A, I just wanted to go back to Mr. Chin, who is now reconnected, um, so he can finish up his his presentation. So, Mr. Chin, do you want to pick up on um, the international cooperation needed? And then we'll yes. Move on to the uh, okay. I think uh, international cooperation is very very important at this uh, difficult time. Because one of the main characters of wind energy industry <coughs> is a globalization. China imports controllers, IDBT, barrio, and so on. And the rest of the world purchases power and many other parts from the Chinese market. Most international manufacturers have set up a factory in China, like Vestas, even has its biggest factory located in China, uh, like Goldwind, the Invasion, and many other Chinese OEMs are also e expanding globally. It benefits all of us. Cooperation is the best way for, for the industry. And we would better maintain the, and even strengthen the globalization in this industry. Working together would be the only way for us to go through this difficult time. The lockdown is temporary, and after it all finished, working together would be the only way to face the challenge, and uh, at last we will win. So globalization, cooperation is important for all the industry. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chin, for that. Um, so now we will kick off our Q&A session. We have a first question coming from Ni Feng Ren, uh, who is on the line. Uh, let me just unmute you, Li Feng, and then you can ask your question. Hello, Li Feng, can you hear us? Hello, Hello. can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you great. Um, okay. so a question. I have I have one question regarding the policy from NIA. Do you think when the NIA is going to release this uh, uh, feeding tariff extension policy? Um, thanks for your question, Li Feng. I think Mr. Mr. Chin, if you want to take up that question. Uh, I think the government have considered the impact of the pandemic and the, the, the central government have asked the, not only wind industry, other industry should uh, increase the invest to make the economic recover. Uh, and uh, the wind is very important for the growth of economic. So I think uh, now, uh, we, we, the, from our association, we have sent a report to the NEA and discuss uh, uh, how to postpone the deadline for greater uh, connection, as I mentioned. I think they, they have considered that and uh, will also the policy with, uh, I don't know the accurate time, maybe next week, uh, maybe two weeks later, but I think the government should um, do that 
it's important for economic growth. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your answer. Thanks, Mr. Mitsukin. I don't know if anyone else has anything to add to that or if we should move on to the next question. Uh, let's move on, I think. Um, so we have uh, Bose on the line who has a question um, about O&M during the COVID crisis. Uh, hey guys, hi, uh, good morning. Uh, thanks, thanks all for your presentation. Uh, I have a question regarding uh, operations and maintenance. So how does wind farm owners, uh, let's say small and medium sized onshore wind farm owners uh, should operate operations and maintenance if for example, COVID extends, let's say for another six months, uh, like how do they plan for better operations and maintenance because safety of these technicians are important and uh, yeah, it would be nice to know some perspectives around this. Thanks for your question. Uh, yes. uh, this is Andy Guy. Uh, maybe I just uh, discussed a little bit on that. Uh, this is a very good question. Uh, different countries may have different situation. You know, uh, through the beginning of this virus till right now, pandemic in the world, uh, obviously there's a different uh, policies and also requirement and restrictions. Uh, in China, uh, at the beginning, you know, through the earlier of March, uh, we got a lot of restrictions. You know, even you drive the car on the road, maybe the local county uh, will block you. And also uh, the different provinces may have different restrictions. Uh, same situation happening uh, in different countries. So it's, there's no unique answer to your question, uh, but uh, from an OEM perspective for the operation and the maintenance, uh, we do got uh, certain of uh, the needs uh, to uh, to operate and also uh, maintaining uh, the equipment during uh, this difficult time. Uh, the efforts that we do uh, usually that uh, we check uh, where the project is and what's the requirements or the policies for that particular county or even city, and then see whether uh, our technicians. Uh, we are drive to that area uh, for personal protection. Uh, company uh, provides uh, uh, sufficient uh, these uh, facilities and equipment. However, uh, it, it does have uh, uh, different restrictions even right now uh, from uh, uh, the local uh, project areas. So uh, uh, in different uh, countries uh, right now, especially in Europe, and uh, they may, uh, uh, execute the different uh, requirements, uh, you know. So that's from uh, Godwin perspective. Uh, we even our own, we have different experience in different areas. So basically there is no unique or one answer to your questions. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, I have an additional question, uh, if it's okay. Yeah, right. sure. yeah. So do you uh, feel that uh, more uh, predictive maintenance technologies, more and more these uh, autonomous uh, systems to diagnose components and to detect faults, these are going to become more important because of COVID and future uncertainties? Yeah, you know, uh, <clears throat> for one, uh, most of the issues that you can, if you can recover from the remote, that, that would be uh, the first choice uh, in these difficult times, you know, uh, either onshore and offshore, uh, we try to resume our systems, uh, either is a warning or there are certain issues that we can recover from uh, the people. Uh, and uh, the companies uh, try to make efforts through uh, this one and technologies uh, towards that direction, even without this difficult time, um, normal time. So uh, those kind of uh, remote recovery uh, techniques or technologies are particularly useful uh, at this time. Uh, but situation, there uh, they do uh, have this kind of situation that uh, probably you have to go to the site. So uh, mm. right now, you know, uh, uh, as we resume work almost 100% in, in most of the areas uh, and uh, there's no uh, uh, issue. However, uh, at the beginning, uh, of um, 
March, we uh, Godwin resumed work uh, at the end of February, but the, the earlier March, uh, there was a lot of uh, uh, restrictions on the roadside, so uh, we couldn't get to the site. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, uh, I hope we all come out of this soon and keep accelerating the transition. Yeah, thanks. Thanks so much for your for your question. Um, I, we have another question from Aiden Cronin, who is joining us. Um, let me just unmute him. Um, Well, he's not unmuting. So maybe I will just read out his question then. Um, so Aiden was wondering um, how we see the US-China relations impacting supply chain on top of the impact of COVID-19 for the rest of the year. Uh, anyone eager to take up this question? Maybe Fong, you could address this. Sorry, I was on mute. Uh, thank, that's a good question. I mean, even before the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, there was a tension between China and the US. Uh, we, at GWAC, we did uh, one asset report just to focus on the gearbox alone to the trade or it's to the extra cost on top of the product produced in China. So uh, now taking into account the pandemics, um, which make this situation even worse, because in the US, for example, uh, the Only these ones before, China before? is really oh. relying on the uh, export market. Uh, towers, gearbox, etc. cetera. Uh, majority of the turbine OEM, they have the turbine assembly different states in United States, but due to the uh, disruption of the supply chain, if you don't have the component available, I think it's hard to get the turbine uh, assembly. Uh, we got the news the day before yesterday, uh, some of the turbine OEM, they have to uh, temporarily uh, suspend the production due to the a safety code um, for their uh, stuff uh, in the factory. So we do believe that there will be some some impact. But again, uh, in general, this pandemic makes this uh, existing challenging situation uh, even more complicated. Uh, the industry have to working together to sort it out. Thank you. Thanks, Fong, for that. Um... Uh, we have another. Fong, could I, Fong, could I just ask you a follow up? When you refer to the factory closure news from yesterday, were you referring to a factory in the US or in China? Uh, in the US. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's good. All right. Thanks. Um, we have uh, another question here um, from an anonymous attendee um, directed to Mr. Oh, no, here we have Mohammed on the line. I'll go with his question first, actually. Um, so I think, Mohammed, you had a question for Mr. Chin. Uh, yeah, I have a question for Mr. Chin. Actually, uh, I'm here in Pakistan and we are facing the same situation of lockdown. Uh, we have uh, like 12 to 14 small scale, 50 megawatt each wind power projects upcoming. Uh, in 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 come in this quarter, and uh, we had already most of the projects. I am among one of the project sponsors, so we have booked the orders with with Chinese manufacturers. Uh, for example, uh, have booked uh, the orders with uh, with Gamisa. So what we have come to know is that uh, due to this lockdown situation, uh, it's uh, very important for the project sponsors. To, to act aggressively and let's say uh, book the orders and make the payments immediately. Otherwise, the, the subsidy which Chinese government has uh, awarded to the wind industry uh, would become void or we would not be able to uh, get 
that uh, subsidy benefit uh, and the prices of the wind turbines would go up. So I just wanted to ask Mr. Chin in specific that how this policy actually relates to, to the upcoming orders uh, which the clients overseas have booked in Chinese markets. And does this really make a sense that, let's say, if, an, if a project in this situation does not proceed with the, with the payments and everything, so would the prices or the, would, would the timelines uh, of the orders would get disturbed? So I just wanted to get more clarity from Chin on, on the policy aspect. Okay, uh, uh, for, for China uh, uh, condition, I think uh, for Chinese market, uh, the government have considered to postpone the, the deadline uh, this first, uh, so can, can, uh, can make some uh, uh, space for, 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 give some more time for the developer to, to construct their, their wind farm. Uh, I think uh, maybe the government considered to postpone the six months uh, later for the deadline. So, so the, the the manufacturer have time to 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 get back uh, to recover for, for and uh, uh, reduce the impact of the pandemic. Uh, but for uh, export, I think uh, uh, it's uh, it's uh, very important. For for I don't know the Gamisa, but I discussed with some uh, Chinese when you uh, manufacturer like Goldman Innovation uh, must. Uh, uh, special for for Goldwind because they have some uh, order from from international. Uh, this side they will guarantee the international market first. Uh, this is uh, what they think about that. Uh, the others I can uh, get uh, for information. Maybe me, Mr. Zhao Feng can uh, I can catch up. Is there any question? So so uh, clear. Yeah. Can so tell so me one yeah. They, one thing. Thanks, I think, I think we'll move on to the next question, guys. Sorry about that, because we're, we're running out of time and still have a lot of questions to, to cover. Um, I mean, we, can, we, can follow, we can follow up and connect people uh, on these yeah, questions. And we're, exactly. we're, noting, we're noting down all the questions. We'll get back to people uh, if their questions are un, unanswered. Exactly. Right. Um, so we'll move on to Martin, who has a question. Um, so over to you, Martin. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I have maybe the, the one million dollar question. I'm not sure if it's already discussed uh, at the first 10 minutes because it was a bit late, but for the short term, obviously the key question is what delay uh, will be seen in the projects in China due to uh, the disruption in the supply chain because of uh, the shutdown of uh, the manufacturing parts and the supply chain. And my second question related to that is, uh, has anybody uh, a view on the fact what will happen in the mid to long term? And because there is a larger sovereign debt, uh, we have a lot of cash out because of uh, trying to manage uh, the COVID crisis. And there's also a slower uh, economic growth. So is there a possibility that uh, the government would probably delay certain investments uh, and focus more on on the, the overall industry, uh, especially related to the cheaper oil and uh, cheaper energy uh, available. Okay, the question is for me. <laughs> I think so. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, 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 but uh, the, uh, I think uh, the Chinese situation is may, maybe different uh, with uh, European and American because uh, for wind and the solar, the renewable energy, uh, we, we fight not for, for oil and the gas. We fight with coal, coal, because the yes. seventy percent electricity come from the coal power plant. So the gas price go down. I think it's better for for Chinese market because we need more gas 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 power power plant because we need more flexibility in the future if more and more solar and wind go to connect to the grid. So I think for the long term, um, it's no impact for China. Uh, another, uh, I think uh, for international situation, I also think because uh, uh, now, uh, I have seen some reports now because the, 
the consumption of electricity decrease because of the pandemic and uh, some under the gas uh, price uh, decrease uh, uh, the carbon the carbon uh, the carbon price decrease so maybe some uh, people with thing do you want to I mean, just in terms of China's economic policy and where it's going, I mean, who does this, I mean, does this benefit anybody else or any other sectors? Or, you know, or does, you know, do you see this as something that doesn't have a big policy impact in terms of energy choices? I mean, the plan is still to move, you know, wind to what they're calling subsidy free and to um, basically take it to the level of the regulated coal price. Um, and other, I mean, can you see any other kind of policy changes as a result of this. Feng? Sorry, I saw uh, Ching is back online, um, but uh, let me just first start uh, with your question. I think uh, at the very beginning, Ching made it, made it clear, uh, probably the Chinese energy market is slightly different from what we have in Europe and the uh, North America, uh, in general, uh, the government has made it clear, and also Ben mentioned that, actually start from uh, next year, uh, onshore wind will completely subsidiary free, which means um, it is a cheap solution in terms of the competition with the fossil fuel. Uh, so looking at the long-term uh, policy, energy-wide from uh, the central government, uh, renewable absolutely is part of the solution in terms of uh, meet, meet, uh, meet the climate change uh, on the entire the society. So if I read the message correctly, uh, Qing will believe, maybe will confirm uh, the policy will be consistent in the next five years plan, that's the 14 five years plan to be released um, later this year. Ching, are you online? If you can hear me, uh, would you please just uh, step out and continue the conversation? Thank you. Okay, uh, your answer is uh, so correct, so great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, perfect. Uh, we'll move great. on then. Thank we'll you very much. We'll take um, one last question here from uh, Fanny Nath, uh, who's on the line. Um, so if you would like to ask your, your question, yeah, hi. Uh, uh, Feng, uh, how are you? This is funny. And uh, my question, anybody can pick up from the panel. Uh, I would just like to know what would be the revised market outlook in China looking into the uh, the delay which has already happened uh, uh, in the projects and uh, what would be the revised outlook for onshore and offshore market for 2020 in China? Looking China recovering from the pandemic now. Thanks for your question, uh, Fanny. Um, maybe Mr. Endy, you want to give uh, uh, your goal ones outlook for the onshore market? Um, and then I don't see Mr. Z on the line anymore. So maybe Fang, you could follow up on the offshore market. Yeah, you know, this question maybe uh, Mr. Ching is uh, the best to answer about the overall market. Uh, you know, I uh, presented that uh, Godwin uh, perspectives on what we can deliver uh, in 2020. Uh, we have uh, this uh, plan to deliver 12 to 14 gigawatts, uh, just from Godwin perspective, uh, Godwin uh, delivery uh, tasks for 2020. So the overall country, uh, I do not have a detailed number here. Uh, I believe Mr. Chin should have this number. Uh, for the offshore, uh, not uh, eager to answer for the, for the offshore, okay? Thank you. Maybe give uh, some data. I think uh, this year um, uh, the new installed uh, capability may be between 20 gigawatt to 25 gigawatt in China. And that's for onshore, Mr. Chin? Yes, yeah, it's onshore. Perfect. And then we have Mr. Mr. Z actually back on the line. So um, did you want to provide your kind of uh, insights on uh, the outlook for offshore wind in China? Yes, and uh, uh, everyone know that uh, some big well, offshore player already uh, got a lot of uh, very big contract from offshore 
market. And the uh, uh, Goldman Shanghai Electricity and uh, Shanghai Electrical Envision, uh, Hydron, uh, Minyang, etc. Um, totally accumulation is huge, uh, which is, means even impossible to, to deal with by uh, all of them by 2021. 20, um, uh, from from our side and envision envision, we still control our pace to deliver our uh, uh, offshore product. And, we will, and uh, uh, at this moment, especially consider the pandemic situation, uh, the situation will be very uh, sensitive uh, or tricky. Um, so, um, and uh, among different uh, developer, uh, which is the Sedong company and different developers have a different policy maybe. Some, some developers are quite conservative. They, they will be, uh, think about, uh, think, think about uh, whether or not they will, they will try to even take a certain risk to uh, deploy their, their project. Uh, some well-prepared well developers uh, like, uh, like Huanan, et cetera, uh, they are big. They have uh, very big ambitions on this on this offshore delivery by next year, and they even commit to the the year after uh, the, the 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 parity offshore market. So for those players, they will very aggressively uh, insist on their uh, commitment on delivery uh, from Envision side, and um, we we have we have our offshore supply chain fully ready uh, because our product policy strategy so we're quite sure we still can deliver uh, the audience take by far thank okay. thank you for that uh, mr z and i think we'll actually have one last question from gwex ceo ben backwell uh who has one last question for the panel yeah um so if you're saying um uh mr chin that we're looking at maybe 20 25 gigawatts onshore for this year in China, that's a pretty big hit compared to what um, we were expecting in our forecast um, you know, before the virus. Um, I think the assumption of most of the analysts, um, including you know, people like uh, Bloomberg New Energy Finance and also GWEC is that a lot of the lost uh, installations in 2020 will spill over to 2021. And that makes a very, very kind of big year in 2021. Um, presuming, of course, that the feed-in tariff extension also is is, um, is is granted. I mean, is that are we being realistic here? I mean, can everything that we're losing in 2020 happen in 2021? And I asked that question to Mr. Endy and also to Mr. Chin and also Feng as our strategy director. I mean, what, what's the answer to that? Mr. Chin, are you online? If not, maybe Fong, you want to pick that up first? Yeah, or Mr. Andy as well. I mean, Hello, it, it, Andy, it, to, uh, to start yeah. with. Okay, okay uh, this is Andy. Uh, so, Ben, your questions uh, on this, you know, there's a, a optimistic side, and also, uh, you know, there are certain uh, situations that uh, we estimate. Um, yeah, the impact from uh, this virus this year, and uh, at least in the first quarter, uh, we know also that's including the Chinese uh, New Year, the Spring Festival. So altogether, maybe uh, another companies they lose almost one month time. So uh, there may be an impact, but usually we pick up very quickly. So uh, right now we are hundred uh, percent return to the work and. Actually, we work very hard, uh, harder than you can imagine. Uh, so with that uh, target that we deliver 12 to 14 gigawatts. So if you say, hey, are there any impact if this pandemic uh, got a certain influence back to China, we are that impact. So those uh, assumptions, uh, you know, there are certain possibilities. But uh, with our plan, with our four efforts right now, we still work towards our target uh, to deliver 12 to 14 gigawatts. And usually, you know, Godwin occupies 35% uh, around uh, in the Chinese market. 
So Mr. Chin's estimated uh, maybe 25 gigawatts, that's the total installation for 2020, uh, considering this virus impact. Uh, you know, ballpark numbers, that's all in the same range. Uh, you know, that's all for the next, you know, nine months. Uh, also, whether there's any more influence from the virus, you know, that uh, we all do uh, the analysis and also look at the information from the world. And we hope that uh, in Chinese market uh, right now, uh, we can move full speed forward. Thank you. Thanks, Justin. Yeah, and it looks like we have Mr. Chin back on the line as well. If you want to just <laughs> very brief um, additions to that from the Sobia side. Uh, I, I think uh, also, if no uh, pandemic, uh, no virus uh, influence, uh, 24, 2029, we consider the new install capability maybe get to 35 gigawatt. So, okay. but uh, because of the vir virus, so I think maybe 20 to 25 gigawatt. Because now, uh, the, because the government uh, strong control, uh, we, uh, the, the control is effective. So now most manufacturers have recovered and uh, during, uh, only lost uh, uh, three months. Mm. How, how, much capacity, how much capacity do you think will spill over to 2021? See how much bigger will 2021 be as a result of this? Uh, I think for 2021, uh, we, we can still increase because the government will postpone the, the deadline for greater connection requirement. So I think uh, next year, 2021, maybe uh, 30 gigawatt. Okay. And the 2020 is okay, but uh, the difficult time is 23 and 24. Mm -hmm. And that's that's because of the that's because of the transition to the new uh, regime, uh, basically around subsidy free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because besides the tariff, uh, the product with the hidden tariff, we have a lot of uh, free uh, free subsidy product already. You know, in, in Mongolia, a bigger product, for example, from from Guodian, uh, one. Developer, they have a big product is uh, six, uh, six, uh, six gigawatt one product, so it, so it's a big potential in the future for two years later. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Chin. Thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Chin. And on that note, I think we'll we'll wrap up our our webcast here. Um, we'll be posting some key takeaways from the, um, our discussions today on our response hub online under the country updates for uh, for China. Uh, you'll be able to find a recording of this webcast on GWEX YouTube channel um, and follow us on uh, LinkedIn and, and Twitter to ha have further updates on the COVID situation and its impact on the wind industry. Um, I would like to thank all of our panelists um, for joining us today. Um, and despite the technical issues, we made it work. Um, so I'd like to thank again all of our panelists and for sharing your insights. And if you have any other questions that we didn't answer on the webcast today, please send an email to info at gwec.net and we will follow up via email. And on that note, thank you for joining and have a wonderful evening or afternoon. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. See you Thank soon. You, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. See you soon.